Whether students decide to attend their graduation in person or virtually, the university wants to ensure a safe and memorable ceremony for graduating seniors. For Bobcat Update, I'm Sydney Tyndall. Family-owned drive-in theater Stars and Stripes in New Braunfels closed back in March due to COVID-19, but shortly reopened in May with new safety protocols in place. The Texas State football team will be at home for a game on Saturday. The Bobcats face Arkansas State at 11 o'clock and the game will be televised on ESPNU. The Black Lives Matter movement began in 2013 as a response to police brutality and racially motivated violence against black people. In 2020, the movement is still advocating for racial justice. Students on Texas State campus are passionate about what the movement personally means to them. A lot of people see it as we're just angry with everyone, but that's not the case. We're just hurt. Um, nobody knows what it feels like to be outside and just wonder if you're going to make it home. In recent months, the number of protests has risen as a reaction to police brutality. Seeing that all this is happening within just one year, and 2020 has not been a good year for any of us so far, especially the black community. That's like one of just go out and just scream and cry, say, why is this happening? What did we do wrong for all this to happen? Or why is nobody even listening to us? The impact of the deaths of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd, homicides at the hands of police this year, hit home for many. Those are people that could very much well be my family. Like, you know, growing up, I was taught, you know, if I ever need somebody, call the police. But now it's like, I don't even feel comfortable doing that. And what first started as a social media hashtag, the Black Lives Matter movement continues to engage in direct action tactics for racial equality and in condemning police brutality targeted at the black community. For Bobcat Update, I'm Sydney Tyndall. Texas State's ESPN Plus broadcast crew has returned to producing sports this fall after months of uncertainty about whether games would even be possible. Wearing masks, cutting down on crew positions, and extra care and cleaning equipment are just some of the new protocols that are now required. Broadcast Productions Manager Lucas Haskins says safety is a top priority. He says the crews are organized in a way that should reduce the possibility of cross-contamination. If, if somebody ends up testing positive, they're not coming to work. And so um, if they come to work and spread it to other people and all of a sudden half our crew is tested positive, um, now we're really in a tough situation to get a broadcast on air. Over the months, concerns about COVID-19 left some student workers unsure of how broadcast would function this fall. But now they feel assurance that it's a safe work environment. They're doing a lot of the work for us, such as, you know, uh, setting up our cameras and making sure that they're clean and everything. Um, so I actually appreciate all the work that they're doing for us and making sure that we're comfortable. While sports may look very different this fall due to COVID-19, the excitement and community that sports brings is still present. For Bobcat Update, I'm Sydney Tyndall. The in-person graduation ceremonies will be on December 11th at Bobcat Stadium and a virtual ceremony will be on December 12th. Some seniors say they're comfortable with the in-person ceremony because it will be held outdoors and following CDC guidelines. There's always a risk being in a big group of people, but I think uh, I trust in the school and the university to take the measures to keep us safe. So I do feel comfortable doing an in-person ceremony. The university also announced that May and August 2020 graduates will have the option to attend an in-person commencement ceremony on December 10th. Due to COVID-19, spring and summer graduations were held virtually, so those graduates missed out on sharing the accomplishment with friends and family. Spring 2020 graduate Sandra Sadek says she's glad the university has found a safe way to hold a ceremony. I think this is you know, a good compromise to give the class of 2020 a chance to be recognized for you know, finishing school and graduating in this whole mess, while also you know, keeping in mind safety of students, staff, family members who will be attending and everybody involved with the graduation process. Graduating college is a significant accomplishment, but for first-generation students, it can be even more meaningful. The university's decision for an in-person ceremony allows families and friends to experience the special moment of watching their graduate walk the stage. As a first-gen student, um, you know, this degree means a lot to me, but it means a lot to my family as well. And um, just for my parents to watch me walk across, that would be, you know, just make my life, really. We are now joined by Tyler Carthel. Tyler, thank you so much for joining us today. The CDC is saying that cases are going up in COVID-19. With Thanksgiving coming up, the holidays, 
What are some of those risks and those rises in cases? Yeah, right now has never been a scary time to be traveling for the holidays with huge spikes in every single state and hot spots just about everywhere. A lot of people are really worried about whether they should even travel this holiday season. So with that being said, what are your plans for the holidays? Um, we're going to try. We're going to go home, uh, see the family at least, um, but we might not get all together. We might not even see all of our cousins like normally. Um, so we're definitely going to be taking some steps back and trying to stay a little safer. Well, definitely be safe traveling, Tyler. And for those of you out there who are traveling for the holidays, please be safe. We're joined now by Tyler Carthel. Tyler, thank you so much for joining us. With these apartments going up in San Marcos and tours being limited, how are students still able to locate these apartments? Yeah, I mean, uh, of course, these tours are being limited, but luckily students can use an apartment locator and that can help them find an apartment uh, that would be just right for them. And we've seen all these apartments going up high rises in San Marcos. How's the vacancy? Yeah, these vacancies are crazy, especially uh, with the amount of Texas State students, you know, the enrollment going down and going down. But we actually will have a story on that next week in Bobcat Update. Thank you, Tyler. That's all the news we have for you today. Soon we'll return with another edition of Bobcat Update with stories from Texas State University and the Hill Country. I'm Sydney Tyndall. Thank you for watching.